When Adair County farmer Fred Thomas started a bale grazing demonstration project in conjunction with the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture, Food and Environment, he was looking for a way to improve the health of both his cattle and his pastures. And I'm happier too because they've, they have not been in mud at all this year. Um, from last fall on, they didn't have to stand in mud. Their condition was tough to maintain and uh, it was easy to maintain this year. In bale grazing, farmers set out hay bales on their land prior to winter feeding. They use temporary fencing to control the cattle's access to bales. As the cattle eat the bales, farmers move the temporary fencing to give them access to more. The movement of cattle gives farmers a better nutrient distribution across their land. This is particularly beneficial on land that has not received any other nutrients in the recent years. Food located on higher elevations limits the time cattle spend in and around water. In the long term, that's the, the positive thing for Fred's farm is he's going to keep more of those nutrients on his farm, keep the water that's leaving his farm cleaner, and uh, that's a plus plus in, in uh, my mind as well. Thomas is working on the project with UK beef extension specialist Jeff Lemkuler and Nick Roy, a Dare County Agricultural and Natural Resource Extension agent. So in these areas, about three times this summer, we'll go in here and we'll harvest the forage that grows from this area, as well as the control exclusions. And from that, we can compare the two and see how much added forage growth we got as a result of the increase in distribution of nutrients. Thomas was a prime candidate for the project due to the topography of his land, which includes rolling hills with flat ridges, direct access to water, and the need to improve his winter feeding program in pastures. Both Lemkuler and Roy have helped Thomas find ways to improve the project and have helped quantify its impacts. This past year, through bell grazing, uh, Fred seen his soil test levels for potassium go from about a 75 to 200. The phosphorus was raised from 20 to 25. When we look at that at numbers, that saved Fred on average $21 per acre on his fertilizer bill this spring. So it's tools like bell grazing that can reduce our inputs on our farms and make us more profitable. The increase in better nutrient distribution due to bale grazing also helped offset fertilizer costs during 2016. As Thomas reseeded the area, he bale grazed during the winter of 2015-16. Thomas let his cattle strip graze the grasses during the summer. When we planted the sorghum sedan last year, following the bale grazing, we did not apply any fertility because there was none needed. After the cattle finished grazing the summer annuals, Thomas reseeded with two novel endophyte tall fescue varieties. He plans to graze the cattle on them later this year. And the, also the nice thing is, is that combining the summer annual, the sorghum sedan, is we've eliminated a lot of the uh, old Kentucky 31 fescue here and with the spray smother spray technique. So this demonstrates another opportunity for pasture renovation while not giving up anything uh, from a yield perspective or at least minimal yield perspective. The project is still a work in progress. After its first year, Thomas, Limkuler, and Roy took inventory of things that were working well and aspects of the project that needed to be improved. During the winter of 2016-2017, Thomas spaced his bales farther apart in larger sections so cattle would not damage the forage stand around the bales as much. I can't see going back to what I used to do, which was every three or four days taking three or four rolls out, you know, through the mud, through the snow, through the rain, and trying to find a new area to set it. I'm going to do it this way again next year just because I like what I see so far.